welcome back to another amazing episode of the Fit Biz Journey podcast. We are back in Florida again at downtown St. Petersburg, but this time I have an amazing guest that we can all relate to. And not because of who she is, it's because of what she has done. She's a doctor, and what's so amazing about her story is, is that she started as a practitioner, meaning in her own business, did everything by herself from cleaning, from accounting, you name it, whatever the business and the practice needed, she did all of it for like the first three to four years. And then after that, she attracted the right people to work with her and now she has a thriving business and she's well known internationally because she got us to speak at amazing speaking engagement all over the world. So she travels while her practice is not running without her because she built an amazing team. But why she's so relatable, even though she's a doctor, not a personal trainer, and well, in the fitness industry, it's so relatable because personal trainers start in their business and they get stuck. Well, she did the same thing. She started in her business, but she thrived and she worked as hard as she can. She only focused on her own business. Her clients blown her up and then the word got out and now she's internationally known and travels and lives her dream. So that's why it's so cool to walk through how she started and where she got today because this, to me, this was just the perfect example for a personal training and a gym business as a person who starts it, works in it, and then how she levels up and moves on while she's doing what she loves. And it was just so cool to see and so humbling to see because it's just one of those amazing stories that I would love you guys to hear. So let's tune in as I sit down and interview Dr. Verma, the founder of Synergistic Integrative Health. All right, thank you so much for being here today. I really wanted to have you because um, being a doctor mm -hmm. and uh, being your own practitioner and at, I guess I should say at, at your practice, yes. um, lots of gym owners, as you guys know, first they personal trainers. So they have to work in their business, yeah. hard time, lots of hours um, to able to afford to open their own gym. And in your case, mm -hmm. you basically doing the same thing because you actually open your own facility where you actually practice, yes. right? Correct. So I wanted to make this perfect connection when we have a doctor uh, sitting in front of us mm -hmm. and figuring out how is that working out and, and how much time do you spend on, for example, the actual working in it mm -hmm. and then how much time you're spending on the business side of it. And then maybe come up with like a solution to help gym owners a little bit and personal mm -hmm. trainers. Then how, if, if, because some people just want to have one single location uh, with a gym and then they just want to be happy to do what they love right. doing, helping people and uh, training clients mm -hmm. and also have a healthy business because what we don't want is to you know live month to month Correct. so it's really amazing to have you and then because you have a successful business mm -hmm. and uh, wanted for now what seven years ish six yeah, six, like years, uh -huh. six years mm -hmm. so it would be awesome for you guys to recreate basically that footprint mm -hmm. so they can also have an amazing um, like gym yes okay Absolutely. so let's start with why did you actually start your own I was just very dissatisfied being just a traditional MD. Mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't find it fulfilling because I don't live my life like that. I really feel that your personal and your professional lives need to mesh together. I don't wear different hats um, when I'm doing my personal stuff versus professional. I think that's the most important take-home point is if you're going to work, it has to, you have to be passionate about it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people in America, especially why things are so stressful, is we tend to separate it, right? We go to work nine to five, come home, hang up that hat, and try to be to someone different. <laughs> that disconnect doesn't work. You're never mm -hmm. gonna be fully successful or happy in life. So that's number one. It, for me, it was just a, that easy transition. And I just felt that I wanted to kind of be in control of things. I think the second thing you have to ask yourself is, are you happy working under someone and having someone tell you what to do or do you strive to become your own boss one day mm -hmm. and for me you know besides the fact that I already knew traditional medicine wasn't making me happy I knew I wanted to do something where I was in control of the situation I'm very you know and everyone has different personality types so there might be people who are more leaders versus people who are more followers mm -hmm. I tend to be more of the leader type um, I have more of a type A plus personality I'm A plus plus and I just I'm a go-getter I don't believe like once I've reached a goal, that's the end of it. I have another hundred goals after that to reach. So I am very ambitious and I wanted to create something that was a reflection of me. And I didn't quite know how to do it. So I often believe in you kind of, you know, follow the path of least resistance and you kind of let things happen. So I left, you know, my traditional uh, family practice uh, and I didn't quite know exactly what I did was was going to do, so I ended up getting double board certified. So I pursued looking into integrative, functional, holistic medicine, and 
I don't know, just really resonated. And that was at a time where what we're seeing now with healthcare, what we, whether it's fitness, plant-based diets, you know, just being more preventative, it wasn't a big thing about six, seven years ago. It was just basically starting. Um, so I didn't know how it would really work out. So I said, you know, let me just create this practice. It's gonna be a little untraditional because I don't take insurance in the practice. So I was really stepping outside the box. Mm -hmm. And I kind of came up with a little blueprint and a little game plan, but then a few things happened. I ended up getting divorced and then my dad passed away. Oh. That was an impetus for me to take it to the next level and say, you know what, I need to create some positive vibes here and to deflect that stress into something I'm passionate about. You know, my ex-husband, we went to medical school together, so mm -hmm. we met when we were like 21, 22. And you know, I ended up having three boys and I was just in a place in my life. I had them relatively younger, so you know, I had my last child when I was about 32 or 33, and mm -hmm. he's 10, you know, yeah, he's about 10 right now, so I guess that gives away my age, but anyway. <laughs> so, you know, for me, it was just, it was a realization that this is a new phase of my life. My life doesn't end because I became a parent. I want to do something more. So, I look for spaces. First thing you know, when you're, fine, you have to visualize where you want to be. Some mm -hmm. people like working out of their home. For me as a physician, I needed to have a space where I could see patients and working out of the home was not an option. You know mm -hmm. that I don't want people in that space of mine. So it took me a good six months. It had to be perfect. It, I looked, you know, where the traffic was coming. Like, is it too congested? How easy would it be to get there? What, what am I, what else am I surrounded with? So location was important for me. Parking. Finally, parking. Is, yeah. Parking. I mean, I was born in New York, you know, I was raised in Jersey, but mm -hmm. I ended up growing up in the suburbs. So I really valued the fact that you don't have to pay for parking if you're going to the grocery store, if you're trying to, you know, get an appointment somewhere. I love the fact that, yeah, ample parking. It was very aesthetic. When you pull into my, uh, the medical complex, there's just trees around, there's ponds in the back. It's, it's different. So I'm on McMullen Booth versus I didn't want to be on 19. So mm -hmm. I narrowed it down, found a place. Then after that, I, you know, I, I didn't have a business degree. I'm a physician. Mm -hmm. um, although I actually did want to get my MBA, but you know, I thought at that time it was just too much. So I just did everything on my own. I laid down what I expected to see in my practice. And then I, you find, have to find contacts. So I reached out to people. I would just email people, call people. A lot of these people were maybe medical reps that I had for my previous, and they started connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And you build this network, really. But I really started with nothing. I didn't mm -hmm. take any loans. You know, like I said, I was going through divorce, so I, I, you know, I just didn't want to have loans and have the burden of that. So I started some zero dollars and um, created that game plan. And then, you know. I just, when I opened up the place, I had every intention, obviously, of success, but people would say, oh, you're going to be 18 months in the hole, you know, it takes a while for, within six months, with no advertising, it just started taking off. Um, I, I remember sitting there, like, the first couple of months, like, worried how I'd pay my rent, you know, because I barely, I, I started from zero dollars, mm -hmm. but miraculously, it was there, like, every, for month one, I, I was able to do everything and it just grew. And I think if you really believe in yourself mm -hmm. and you have that ambition and you put yourself out there and represent what you're trying to sell, mm -hmm. it's gonna, you're going to be successful. It was so amazing to hear how Dr. Verma still spends amazing amount of time with her patients. Even the ones from like five years ago when she started the business, she still spends time with her patients and one-on-one -on -one what she told me is, that she is 100% focusing on that patient. No phones, no distractions, no nothing. And the reason why I bring this up because this is huge for pro star trainers and coaches. Because your client that comes to see you is needs your one-on-one -on -one attention and she still does that as a doctor. So you guys should really think about this because that's something that I really focus on too. Even if I fill in for some of our coaches or something because I travel around the studios and I do this when I like, all right, let's train with the founder of For Your Fitness and then I jump in and then I surprise the clients. But I 100% focus my attention on that person. My phone is gone. I don't care if it's an emergency. My word only exists right here with that person, one-on-one. -on -one. And it was amazing to hear from her. So let's go on and hear uh, why she did it, how she did it, and what really going on with her, and what, how much it that actually helped her to become who she is, and how it helped her employees and workers and everybody in the business to be just like her. You know, I think the problem, especially in the medical care field, or whether you're a fitness or you know a personal trainer, you have to look the part. Mm -hmm. You know, I, a patient doesn't want to go to a doctor who's telling them to get healthy, lose weight. If they're sitting there and they're overweight themselves yep. and they're smoking and they're drinking soda, how do you take someone seriously like that? 
You know, your personal trainer is not going to be overweight, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be fit. Yeah. So you have to represent that. So I was that image that, you know, you, it's like be the change you want to see, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what helped me. Mm -hmm. And then it's just experience. Make mm -hmm. yourself relatable, you know? I never, even though I'm a physician, you know, yes, I've earned that title. I don't put myself above people. Like I'm very personable with people. Mm -hmm. So when you're running a business, you can't ignore the needs of the client yep. you know make yourself available not overly available but in the beginning when you start a business yes people were texting me i was um answering emails at all sorts of hours that's how you build a business yep. right you mm -hmm. want to gain people's trust but when you become successful you don't want to neglect it that's exactly. another pearl you have to cons be consistent mm -hmm. and six years later those same patients that started seeing me six years ago they're still oh my gosh dr verma like i can't believe you're still doing you know you're still how you were. Mm -hmm. There's so much consistency, you know? Yeah. And the testimonials and all those things, those are real. Like when people are doing it, they're unsolicited. These are the experiences people have. To so always be consistent, deliver the best that you can. And you just, you change with the time, you know? Mm -hmm. I, my goal is to expand. So Got I think, it. you know, that might transition to something else. But like, you reach a certain point and now you want to really spread the message. Mm -hmm. So you have to have these objectives of what do you want to do? Are you happy you're going to have one location? Or do you want to become more like a franchise? And, you know, and then that's where you have to now bring in other people to help you. Mm -hmm. I exactly. spend so much of my time doing administrative work. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So now we know how you picked it, why you picked it, how you got there. Yeah. So now it would be cool to kind of understand that what it actually, and I really like what you said about, by the way, the. Uh, the time commitment to the clients and yes. still doing it today yeah. um, because it's huge and I know so many personal trainers that I have met and seen and from experience that they're like oh, I'm not gonna reply back because it's after 5 or 6 or 8 p.m. or whatever and all that and of course we have personal lives that kind of stuff but I also like what you said about um, the uh, the you don't put up your hat when you get home right. it's basically a part of your life yes. so don't live a different life you know outside of it yeah. but um, and that's those little things make a huge difference by picking let's say you and mm -hmm. somebody else down the street right. and those are these little things that because for example I have met so many trainers mm -hmm. who would say if I say that we doing things this way they would say well those people don't do it that way and I was like well yeah that's why the clients coming to us because right. you know they're not doing it like that right. so in your case too if somebody comes to you or not that you expand and they will tell you that that well I'm not gonna do all that because exactly. the other practices don't do it and I was like well then go work for the other practices exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah well that's a great point so I'm hope you guys are listening and paying attention to this because you're giving away so everything that basically you are saying and you guys to make sure take a note of it, just replace the practice to basically your studio yeah. and then what basically she's selling and what you're offering, you're just replacing it for your offering. It works. The business is the same language. Yeah. You're just basically changing the keywords. Exactly. Yeah. So what would be, you said that you're planning on expanding and you also said you spent lots of time on administrating work. So would you be able to walk us through that? The yeah. Let's start with, I guess, the administrating work because that's what got you where you are, I yeah. guess, today. Yeah. You know, we all start from, and truly, I started from humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, like I said, I started with nothing in the bank, and um, for three years, you won't believe it, I was the only one in the office. Wow. Yeah. I was the physician, I was the front desk person, I was the nurse, I was the janitor, I was everybody. Mm -hmm. um, because I believe if I really had to put myself into my business, it doesn't matter that I'm a physician or not. I had to be everybody to understand the interaction mm -hmm. that other people were going to have when I started hiring people. So I never oh, advertised. Sorry, I want to pause you just for a second because I love what you said about the, I have to be everybody and understand everybody because yeah. I have met, no offense to anybody with title, yeah. but I have met so many people with titles, you know, who would be like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not a, yes, I'm a, I'm a, a doctor. I'm an attorney. I'm a whatever. You know what I mean? Yes. So, Sorry to interrupt you, but I thought that was huge, what you just said. Humility is key. Yes. Okay, like I said, the t titles, you know, the MD, mm -hmm. yeah, is that great? That's an elite thing. But I don't make myself ever make anybody feel like they're <laughs> below me. And yeah. I think that's, again, why people come. But mm -hmm. I didn't do any advertising at all. And I still, to this day, haven't done oh, any advertising. That's awesome. yeah. And again, I had so much faith in if I was providing the right service. Again, it's a service. It doesn't matter what field you're in in business. It's a service you're providing to the client. I knew if I was offering the best, it would get around. Mm -hmm. So I sat there for three years. Again, I was like, you know, it's about time. I would spend <laughs> 15, 16 hours, even if I had my boys, like I would just spend so much time in the office doing work that really someone who I would pay, you know, 
12 13 15 dollars an hour should be doing mm -hmm. the, the kind of receptionist work yeah. you know which was fine i didn't mind it but because my practice was growing so quickly now i had to really think i didn't have a business advisor i really did everything my own so i was very proud of myself that not having a business mm -hmm. background or you know my dad was an engineer my mom just was kind of a stay-at-home mom I, I didn't have an exposure to anyone who was a physician in my family much less a business person so i taught myself everything so i you know i can't believe i did it but it happened mm -hmm. um so i never advertised and then my first employee she was from maryland she was a mother of seven children wow. <laughs> her husband was like a state senator in maryland um, wow. wonderful these people who get attracted to me um they have the same energy that my practice has, right? So these are the people who want to be in the preventive uh, lifestyle, who are proactive about their health. Well, she had lost about 60 pounds. She came across my website. She goes, I just had such an amazing energy that I felt from looking at your website. Website's another thing, yeah. okay? That's not really quite advertising, but that's putting yourself out there, right? Yes. So people know you're there. Mm -hmm. So she came, she interviewed, and she goes, I just was so drawn to you, so I hired her. She worked for me for about a year and a half, and then she ended up having to move back. So. Then, you know, I'm like, what am I going to do? And then the next person came was, you know, she was actually a patient of mine. She walked in and she goes, Dr. Bermond, I just need a job. She just came to me. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I just love how you treat your patients and how you treated me. I would love to work here because I'm going through a transition. Mm -hmm. So I hired her. Then, I, you know, I hired another person. And then and, uh, call, my colleague, um, Dr. Sharma, she actually saw my website uh -huh. and she goes, I just really liked your website and I was wondering if you're going to hire someone. So I'm like, I don't know, I'm not really looking for another physician, but she ended up being also an in integrative medicine. I'm like, That's awesome. I met her, same kind of energy. I mean, you can see her on my website. I mean, it's like one in a million chance mm -hmm. that these people who work for me, like I couldn't even imagine finding them if I advertise on LinkedIn mm -hmm. or Craigslist. Not that that's a bad thing, I'm just saying I have so much faith. Yep. And if you're confident in your business, you're going to attract the people who are looking to do the same thing you are. Yep. And, and now I'm looking on to bring yep. another physician almost. I'm sorry, you're gonna say no, something. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Go ahead. And now I'm looking on to bring another physician. I'm, good. I'm hiring an aesthetician. Like, uh -huh. this is the growth, and I know 2020 is gonna be the year of growth and expansion. It just, it unfolds and it happens. And how did you went from, um, basically, so you were on your own completely. Completely. And then how did you, was it a hard transition to go to, all right, now I have my first, my second, my third. Was it like hard for you and let things go? Because that's what most gym owners struggle with the most. Yes. Then when they hire a trainer, two things, one, which you can talk about. One is, A, they tell them, all right, now you're hired, go figure out your job, which mm -hmm. they don't teach them, which is a huge problem. Right. And then they blame them, of course, that they're doing something wrong. wrong right. yep. and, and even if you teach them, but you don't uh, really explain like how to, for example, unplug this at night and you don't explain them how to unplug it, they might break it. And yep. then like, oh, what did you do? But anyways, so that's one. So the training is very important. But the second is, trust because yes. how you let something go because it's your baby you have been yes. doing it forever and then now some, you are basically just waiting for somebody to do what you used to do so, sorry go ahead go on no those are those, those yeah. are great points um the whole part about being the baby your your mm -hmm. baby synergistic uh, now it's continuum actually because it's growing that is that is my baby that was a rebirth of my soul mm -hmm. when i was going through the darkest periods of my life like you know i lost you know my father i'm getting divorced I mean, I didn't know what to do, right? But I knew this was gonna create such amazing opportunities for me. So I knew like though the tunnel was dark, I knew there was a light at the end of it. As I interviewed hundreds of people now on the podcast, every single one of them who is successful and have a thriving business has said the same thing that she's about to say about building and having the most amazing team. So let's see what Dr. Verma has to say about her team. So when you have your baby, it's like you have to choose like, I knew I didn't want to work for anybody. But when you work under people, you don't really pay attention. You're not, I don't want to say disrespectful, but you're like, okay, I'm going to use as many paper towels. I'm going to just, <laughs> yeah. you don't clean up after yourself, right? Yep. That's the hard part. I knew now running a business, I had to be responsible for all that. So again, when I was wearing all the hats and being the janitor, I knew I had to do that. So I was more aware of it, mm -hmm. as opposed to when I was working somewhere else, I'm like, oh, someone's going to come and clean it up. Yeah. I've always been responsible. I also have to just uh, make a little disclaimer. I'm very much a perfectionist. So that training part is key. Mm -hmm. If you truly want people to follow um, the etiquette in your, in your business and follow the protocol and guidelines, I think you have to create something so everyone's on the same page. Because when, again, when people come in, your clients or your patients or whoever, they want to see their uh, it flows, right? They want to see that there are similar things that everybody does. Not that they're going to have to experience something different with this one person and go to the 
another person and they get a completely different experience, it has to be homogenous. Yeah. It has to flow really well. So I think training is going to be a key. And I, like you said, that was a great point. Yeah, it can be something as petty as unplugging something, but it mm -hmm. has to be done because if that's the way you were running it and there were no issues, then that's what you need to teach other people. Exactly. So training them, even if it's, it's like, oh, that um, there's no more toilet paper, make sure that you have a spare one. Those little things, mm -hmm. that's how the practices run. And whatever business you run, there's going to be rules that people have to follow. Yep. So I still clean my office to this day. I expanded from 1,200 square feet to 2,400 square feet. Wow. And I'm going to be expanding to Tampa later this year as well, too. This is now where I have to have a team of people help me because I cannot mm -hmm. be in more than one place at a time. You know, exactly. I do a lot of national and international lecturing. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll be going to Taiwan and Dubai and Thailand. I'll be traveling so much this year that I have to now trust people. So this takes us to the trust part. Exactly. Training people is key but training them to where you tell them what needs to be done. And you know, this is where business comes in and the legalities come in. You have to have them sign like NDAs and mm -hmm. contracts. And that's gonna be a great way for them to understand they need to follow protocol. Yep. They can't leak information, that they have to be honest. You know, when it comes down to the monetary stuff, you know, luckily in my practice, I don't really deal with a lot of cash. It's really all credit cards or checks. So there's no worry for me to really be where that cash go. We created systems where I just had hired an office manager about eight months ago. And she created these amazing systems where you have a batch sheet, you log in every single charge, you go into QuickBooks so you can back check and you have the bookkeeper. Um, you have to be willing to expand. And I think that was a little hard for me in the beginning because when you have your own baby and you start your practice or your business, you have to be able to be open. If you can't have a good team under you, you're never going to be successful. That was the biggest thing I learned. Like, do I need a clone of myself or am I going to allow people to do it, but they're still doing about 85 to 90% of what I do? No one's ever going to do you, nope. you know? And yes, I am a perfectionist. I don't like errors. You know, I don't even like typos. You know, it really bothers me. Not everyone is going to be me. And letting go is going to be key in expansion. If you can't let go, you're stifling yourself. And I like what you said that if they can do it at least 80% right, then go ahead and let go. They yeah. can do it. Yeah, 80% is way better than you doing none or yeah. worst. Yeah, because eventually. you can't spread yourself too exactly. thin. Remember, to yeah. air is human. And these are how these employees are going to learn. Yeah. And you know what? I've said, my, when Dr. Sharma came in, you know, she shadowed me for a good one to one and a half years. And you know, she's not trying to be a clone of me, but she, I've heard patients say, wow, she's really awesome because she reminds me of you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like to hear, but she's still her own. You yeah. know, so awesome. set an example, let them train, develop that trust, and then let them go. Yep. And then see how they do. And then make sure also another part of business, that was what I've actually recently learned is sit down and have reviews with them every three months, six months. <laughs> they have to get raises, right? Give them the good, give them the bad, give them the ugly, but always sit down and say, this is professional, you know, this is constructive criticism. And well, often we become really good friends with a lot of employees, sometimes, you know, some mm -hmm. people more than others. Draw the line, you know, make rules once when you hire them, and especially if they're your friends. Say, these are the rules when you're in this professional setting. You can't be on your phone, you can't be, you know, mingling with the clients like they're your friends or the patients. You have to set ground rules. If you don't do that in the beginning, mm -hmm. there's gonna be a lot of gray areas, yep. and that's where gonna, problems are gonna arise. Yeah, exactly. There's, I'm glad you said all those things because those are very important. Yeah. But now let's go back. So you said you're going to travel a lot, right? Yes. This year. So what are one of the few things that you're doing now that so and so now you have a team of people, basically, yeah. you're there that you led behind, basically not behind, but let mm -hmm. basically run the business while you're traveling, right? Yes. So what would you what you're planning to get out of your travels and the speaking engagements and all those things? Is it a separate business or it's all feeding back to this one? At all my speaking engagements have come as opportunities for my business. So remember I said I never did any advertising. Mm -hmm. When I, I started appearing on the news, the local news, I had done WFLA. I'm kind of a, a regular on Bay News 9. Mm -hmm. I started blogging. I just got approached by a lot of people. So I actually am a faculty speaker for a very big um, organizations called American Academy of Anti-Aging. They're actually global. Mm -hmm. So these are my opportunities speaking in Taiwan, to Dubai, to Thailand. Um, the big conferences in America are like Orlando and Vegas. So this is all part of work. Mm -hmm. um, my goal, like I said, is the reason I want to expand and bring on a bigger team is because I want to allow myself now to pursue my next dream, which is which educating is. the masses. Got it. Mm -hmm. And this is why I love doing podcasts. I love doing the news. I love writing articles. I jump at every opportunity. Um, and I just, I recently got asked, I, you know, on 
speaking, I'm a medical marijuana prescriber, so I do I do so many things in my practice, mm -hmm. everything from aesthetics to cannabis to IV therapy to weight loss to detox. I mean, it's a potpourri of things, but that's what makes my practice so unique. So I think I, it appeals to a lot of organizations. Yeah. So I just got a phone call the other day and someone said, I saw you speak at the uh, Medical Marijuana Association back in Orlando, I was really impressed by you. We are developing our first annual um, uh, CBD uh, conference and we would love for you to be a speaker That's um, awesome. and opportunities just start growing you have to start somewhere you know like I said I sat there by myself you know doing everything I could and it was just believing in yourself and let me ask you this because I know so many gym owners that um, you know they they well especially in the fitness industry it's a little bit different because unfortunately um, the gym owners and personal trainers I started out like that too yeah. they all started out like uh, we know everything so that's their yeah. mindset which is the worst mindset to have so until you actually fall and learn the hard way that is you don't know everything right. I don't know everything everybody is, as long as you never know everything you will be good yes, that's true. <laughs> but um, what I want to say is that so many gym owners doing it wrong and what they do instead of actually have opportunity knocking on their door and door and take it because of how amazing their business is and their employees and, and clients and all those striving they actually go out their own way in business and pitch to these speak engagements to go speak about whatever they need them to speak or they could speak and sell and they sell something new yeah. um, instead of focusing on their current business right. so in your case though you were focusing 100 percent on your business yeah. internally yes. and then the opportunities technically showed up at your door right. versus you seeking them out so that's mm -hmm. just basically i don't know i wanted to point this out because you you are the perfect example of if you work hard and you just keep pushing then people start showing up right. you just can, like your employees you can't be yeah. picky, you can't be picky too. You know, I think sometimes the expectations people mm -hmm. are they have of themselves are too high because they feel like what we talked about before is they elevate themselves, right? Yeah. And they there's humility and there's a sense of grandiose sense of grandiosity. Like you, feeling grandiose is not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. You're going to do things where you're not going to get paid. Mm -hmm. You know, I did the administrative work, like I said, where I could have paid someone twelve dollars an hour, um, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I wore that hat and it taught me so much and it enforced the humility in me as a physician. And to this day, and, and that's part of my nature too, like I just, I don't like putting myself up on a pedestal. Um, you have to be humble, you have to be aware of what's going on, and you have to accept opportunities as they come. Mm -hmm. Definitely seek them out, but don't expect that, you know, you're so important that you're going to be paid for everything. There are a lot of things I did in the beginning that I get paid, that I still do now because I like doing it. It excites me, it makes me happy because spreading the wealth of health for me is, is my passion. So as you're growing and as your business growing, and this was especially amazing to hear from a doctor, but I wanted to talk about the entitlement and just the titles itself in business because that can literally ruin a business, just giving the title to the wrong person and that person abuse it. But I was blown away what she had to say about titles and entitlement and let's hear what she's saying because this is something that everybody could learn from. Yeah, as our opportunities where you're going to find things. But one of the points is what we talk about is there's always going to be tons of other people who do what we do, whether you're in fitness or medicine or you know retail, you know sales, developing cosmetics. I mean, mm -hmm. cosmetics is a big industry. I mean, look yeah. at what Kylie Jenner has now created, right? Oh, yeah. But why <laughs> are there always people? Yeah, she's a billionaire, but mm -hmm. there's going to be another person who did the yep. same thing, but they're not successful. You yep. know. Sometimes it's the right timing, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like the Spanx, you know, yeah. developer. You yeah, know, that took forever. It took forever, mm -hmm. but then yeah. yeah, there were other things that were just equally as good, but yeah. Spanx is now this billion dollar, you know, mm -hmm. brand. It's timing, it's how exactly. you go about doing it as a business owner. You mm -hmm. have to, there's a certain amount of savvy that you have to have. Yeah. For sure. And then I think this is the perfect time to put in that quote when you say the harder you work, the luckier you get. Because as you keep working, working away like you did, luck usually knocks on the door. But it's not really luck. It's just yeah. basically, you could say almost like destiny just because you've been working on it. Yeah, you're creating your own path. Yeah. Don't expect things to be handed to you. I yeah, think exactly. you, if you ever have a sense of entitlement, you're never going to get far. Uh, yes. You can't be entitled. It doesn't matter if you're born into a really you know rich family. And I think those people who do Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff where they're born into something big but still work as if they had nothing mm -hmm. they're going to be the most successful yes. and they're going to have the best sense of humility I agree you yep. cannot be entitled for things I think you know it's important to recognize no not everyone's equal mm -hmm. you know but when you're looking at other people you have to look at yeah what is your competition how can I do this differently and I think to this day I still set myself apart 
from other people. Now, going to Tampa might be a little more challenging, or coming down into St. Pete, that's going to be, those are going to be my next mm -hmm. two projects. Um, sure, of course, there are a lot of physicians who might do what I do, and there's a lot of people who do aesthetics and the wellness, but what sets me apart is because I am who I am. And, and I'm going to keep delivering that message. Exactly. And guys, you do the same because you could say there are so many personal trainers and gyms, especially now in this boom that everybody's in yes. the fitness industry yep. and health. <laughs> then, uh, and because of social media, it's social so easy. Media, yep. yeah, YouTube and Instagram, everybody's everybody. doing it. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's so funny because just everybody knows this, but then just when somebody has a, even your clients, our clients, they could have a success with what they did. And all of a sudden, they just became an influencer on social media and were like, all right, now I'm going to teach you how to do it. Right. And then, you know, they, great, they figured out their own body, but the real people who know how to actually have clients and work with them figured out how to deal with each individual person that comes in with their each individual problem versus reflecting your own problems on them to fix it, you know? Yeah, and another important, that's a great mm -hmm. point. Another important thing is always expect the best, um, but you have to prepare for, there are going to be some unhappy yes. clients or patients. I mean, luckily to this day, I've had kind of all five-star reviews, you know, mm -hmm. because, and I'm really proud of that. Um, but, you know, the other day I, I got someone who, you know, wasn't so happy, but that's like one out of a thousand people, you know, mm -hmm. and if you don't experience those lows, you're never going to know how to improve yourself. Exactly. Um, you know, for me, it wasn't something on my part that I felt that I did wrong. It was unfortunately the patient's perception. Mm -hmm. um, but I still take it to heart. You know, did it hurt me a little in the beginning? Of course it did, but yep. I can't let that get me down. You have to get back up, you know, fall seven times, stand up eight. Yep. Um, but be prepared that you're not going to be the, uh, perfect to everybody. Mm -hmm. There are going to be people who are unhappy with what you provide and go seek uh, service somewhere else. Yep. And if you can make yourself be aware of that, that's going to make you stronger. Especially in um, health and wellness and fitness. Yes. And oh, it's it's one hundred percent service industry, and it's I would say it's the yeah. worst, but the best because you yeah. influence people in a way. But what you said is there are some, and sorry for the word, but nasty people in a way yeah. Yeah. that that no matter what they come into your practice or gym or studios that they shouldn't be, and then some people just take them on because of money reasons, but they shouldn't have. Yes. Or for in your case, because now you're gonna have a team of people, so you're not gonna meet every single client. Correct. So when I experienced that, so when I was a trainer, I never had anybody that I had to deal with or any refunds when I used to be a trainer myself, right? Exactly. And then because you do money back guarantee results, basically some refund people, but you know what, some people play games with that. Mm -hmm. But long story short, what I'm trying to say here is that, that I never experienced that bad part until I stepped away completely from training. Right. And then through other people, like let's say, not necessarily our trainers did something wrong, but that person, just like you said, the client perspective, they thought it's something else. So because of that, they became really nasty about it. And the way they talked to the trainer or to us was just crazy. And then I was like, how is this even possible? I never had that before. So the only reason I'm saying is because when you are not there as you, the, the, the oh, I'm the one who's hurt or whatever, the, I'm the, the coach or I'm the, the doctor, then all of a sudden they blame somebody else and they hope that blame gets to you, but they don't really care about you anymore. Right, exactly. It's kind of like different. So that's why um, I wanted to just point this out because when they have so many locations, that's when we say, oh, it's a corporate. When we look at like, let's say yes. Equinox or LA Fitness or something like that. I mean, if you paste that LA Fitness, for example, you can't complain to the owner because you don't even know who that is. Right. Unless you do a Google search. You know? Exactly. So it's a little bit different as you, as everybody grows and as you guys grow, the level of communication, the client's communication, it changes. But in your case, it's so far you did an amazing job to create that team. Mm -hmm you know, who basically replicated you completely, which is awesome. You yeah. have to always encourage a positive environment. Yeah. So training is going to be key. And I think in any business that you have is to have a proper mm -hmm. training um, and to instill in them what the goals are, what the vision is of, the, um, mm -hmm. of your practice or of your business. How that right now, I think every good business will let the people that they hire know the expectations, mm -hmm. right? Have them sign some type of agreement, um, non-disclosure, whatever it is. And, you know, train them properly. Make sure you, when they're getting trained, you put them under someone who you know is going to train them well. A lot of these successful franchises or businesses, um, for example, you walk in Trader Joe's, right? Mm -hmm. The customer service that you get there, they're so friendly. Yeah. I just read an article how everybody talks to you and they ask mm -hmm. about your personal life. That's the ethic of that, right? Yeah. That's the basis, the morale. Yeah. And then incentivize. Yeah. Always incentivize. They're working. They're making their money, right? It's kind of like a waitress, right? They make what two dollars an hour. <laughs> their their sal their income is based on the tips. Yep. That's that's personal service, right? Mm -hmm. That's customer service. So always incentivize your employees. As a boss, I'm starting to really realize. As a boss, as the owner, um, 
tell them they did a good job. Have little fun things where, okay, if you book the next five patients, you're gonna, you're gonna get a free something. A lot of my um, employees buy all this stuff from me. So I incentivize them, say, you're just gonna get it at my cost, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, give them little fun mm -hmm. things, you know, where they can um, feel special. Bonuses, you know, Christmas yeah. bonuses. Take them out to dinner, you know, take them, you know, somewhere, yeah. you know. Yeah. Make them feel wanted. Exactly. Because if they're not recognized and they're trying hard, they're mm -hmm. going to be disgruntled. You don't yeah. ever want to have a disgruntled employee. Exactly. Right? When, what would be the number one advice if you could give a new, I guess, a tumor or a person, or which could be, in your case, a yeah. new doctor who's starting their own practice, but what would be the number one advice that you have learned on your own and you would tell them to do or not to do because you learned the good or the hard way? Hard way? So I have a good and clear vision. That mm -hmm. is the most important thing because if you don't have that vision, you can't execute it. I think a lot of people, we dream, right? And we have, we're like, oh, dreams. And, but unless you know how to execute it, you know, you're not gonna go anywhere. The vision is the most important thing. Execute it properly, write it down. Like in my case, I didn't have anybody, right? I, I kind of did everything and I was trying to create a network by mm -hmm. asking different people, mm -hmm. yeah. but I taught myself. If you have people that you know that you can ask questions to, um, have a network, have a business advisor, don't be afraid to ask for help. You're never too important to ask for help. Exactly. That's my biggest piece of advice. That's awesome. And uh, what, where can people find you right now? I have my uh, website, so that's uh, www.drdeepaverma.com, doctors with a DR, or it's synergistichealth.com. Synergistic has a Q, everybody, not a C at the end. Um, <laughs> And so those are the main things. And then I think on YouTube, I, I'm working on the channel, but Instagram is at Dr. Deepa Verma MD or it's at Synergistic underscore Continuum. I'm on, my presence on Facebook is pretty large because I've been on that longer. Mm -hmm. Instagram, I kind of just started. So it's under Synergistic Health okay. on Facebook. We'll link all of them below, by the way. Yes. So they will be able to find it. And is there any last thing that you want to give away or say or recommend or anything for the people who are watching right now? Just fall, I, honestly, follow your dreams. Like I said, you have to execute them. Don't just, they cannot just be dreams, you know, and expect to trip and fall. And if I have to say one thing is mm -hmm. they are not obstacles, they're stepping stones. Yeah. It is your perception that creates your success. I'm glad you said that because I always wait for people to say something like that because if you keep looking at it that, oh my God, another horrible thing, my day is ruined, then you're never able to get through that. But if you look at it, all oh, right, another obstacle I have to overcome, then it's right. a completely different story. It's a stepping story. stone. It's, exactly. well, it's the basic yeah. Well, that's what I meant, yeah, stepping yeah. stone. Yeah. It's the basic thing, is the, yeah. is the glass half full or half empty? Exactly. Always have a positive outlook. Yeah. And without failure, you're never gonna be successful. I don't think there's any successful person this world, whether it's Richard Branson or Elon Musk, mm -hmm. who hasn't failed several times before they finally oh, became they successful. A lot. You and can't big, yeah. just be successful yeah. on the first try. Exactly. And then and it's okay to fail, but so lots of people fail fail because they are like, all right, that's they it, it beat up. me. And exactly. They give up. But if you keep standing up one more time, then you fall down and obviously you didn't fail. As long, you fail when you stop trying. Yeah. I mean, unless you're dead, there's no reason for you to get back up. Exactly. I mean, seriously. Exactly. <laughs> 100%. And then lastly, with the one thing I wanted to say also with the uh, getting back up and failing is that, that the thing is that what makes a successful person and the non-successful or not as successful is also because these failures are going to happen. So when you are down, it also depends how fast you can get up because mm -hmm. some people take a day, some people take an hour, some people take a week, some people take a whole year when something really bad happens to you from that to divorce to all those things like you mentioned as well and you lived it mm -hmm. then all those things it really depends how long it take you and then take the energy when you finally realize you know and put into something new or your current business but the point is again you have to get over it unfortunately i know so it's so it could be really hard wherever you are right now but um if you actually don't get over it either way once you get over it you just wasted that amount of time that took you to get over it that's what i'm trying to say you know right. how i'm trying to say that it's also yeah. like everyone everyone's gonna be different and i never mm -hmm. compare yourself to anyone exactly. what, you know there's just no cookie cutter you know schemes for anything right yeah. You're, you have to listen to yourself but i think the main thing is don't have self-loathe don't self-pity yourself mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, your energy is what attracts you or repels you from someone. And what you put out to the universe is what you're gonna receive, you know, thousand fold back. So if you have negative vibes, nobody wants to come to someone who just is constantly complaining and things like that, right? Yep. Look at it, shift your perspective. Instead of complaining, say, what can I do to make myself better? It might, yeah, like you said, it might take a day or an hour. If it takes you a week or two months or a year, that's okay, that's mm -hmm. your timeline. Yeah. But you have to get up. Yes. Just recognize. 
and that's what we need to finish it because that was amazing <laughs> well guys hope you liked it don't forget that it's on youtube facebook instagram igtv itunes iHeartRadio, everywhere so we are everywhere if you listened make sure to watch it if you watch make sure to listen and don't forget to share like comment and we will see you until next week and thank you so much thanks, for being yeah. here today thanks for having me <laughs> thank you guys for listening to this i really hope that she helped you guys a lot from where you need to go now if you're just starting out your own business or if you're a personal trainer in your business i counted at least 10 things that i could do today differently that will help me to go way further than where I am today just from this podcast. So I hope you have found those 10 things as well and you're going to take action on at least one of them. Just, just do one at a time and it will already help you. So, you know, next week we're going to have another special guest. I'm super excited. I'm not telling who it is just yet, but make sure to stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe because we're going to have some amazing guests this year throughout the whole year and you don't want to miss out. And I want to make sure that we always deliver amazing content about the guests and about what you need to know to able to be more successful in your business. So we always break it down into pieces and I find the right people for the right questions for you. So please share, please comment. Don't forget to send us emails. Our website is fitbizpodcast.com. Um, my email is daniel at 4 you hyphen fitness.com so so daniel at for you dash fitness.com is my email you can send me anything and you can also find me on instagram at fitbiz podcast or at daniel z middle name and neary so daniel z neary is my instagram you guys can find me please follow please comment please message and let's get going for the next episode thank you so much